Hello everyone, and welcome to something a little bit different for this week's video. Today I'd like to take a closer look at just one feature of our game, the classic Metroidvania Unlock Loop. What is it? How do you build one? And why is it so important? If you've ever played a Metroidvania before, you've experienced this loop. During exploration, you see a new area that seems impossible to reach. Shortly after, you unlock a new ability that allows you to reach this area. You return to the unreachable area, use the ability, and continue exploring. How do we actually design something that does this? Keenan Pierce made a great blog post on the subject, and I'll put a link to this in the description. Essentially, we can break it down to a few key steps. Firstly, make something that appeals to the player that they can't reach yet. Secondly, have them gracefully bounce off this area and continue down another route. Next, enforce the route that delivers the player to the location at the right time without backtracking. Finally, make sure this location is memorable as it might be some time before the player returns. We can show all these elements working in our wall run example. When building the map, we only need to worry about the white box. If it doesn't work here, it's not worth progressing to the later stages. We start with a player moving right to left, directly into the wall they can't climb yet. When they turn round, the next closest path is our new route. This is the bounce. As they continue down this path, they'll eventually encounter the new ability. Firstly, we ensure the player understands how to use this new ability using the methods we've described in our Jumping to Conclusions video. Once that's done, we lead them to the return path. We ensure the path has the player naturally facing towards the new area, so they are more likely to do what we as designers intend. They use a new ability and reach the new area. We've done it! But wait, what about all the other stuff? Next comes the art pass. Art has two main jobs here, to support the existing work in the design layer and to add some unique elements to make the location memorable. For the first part, more layers are added in front and behind of the designer tile map to add extra detail. Special attention will also be given to the critical path. For example, glowing mushrooms guide the player down this path and flickering candles draw the eye to the intended route following the bounce. Note that the return path is intentionally quite plain. We'd rather players didn't notice it until they're actually able to use it. The statue in this area is unique to the room, so hopefully it'll jog the player's memory once they return. Now we're getting into the finishing touches. We have a dynamic camera system that can be influenced by designer placed objects. Internally, we call these objects points of interest. These can be different strengths, priorities, and even turned off completely. Do let me know if you'd be interested in another video that talks more about this. During the initial run through the area, we gently pull the camera up towards the new path. And once the player has grabbed the new ability, we disable this and turn on a separate point of interest that brings the player's gaze over to the new area. Finally, there's just one more thing we've added to make sure that everyone ends up on the same page. Anyone who has watched the live streams know that we take our UX very seriously and have spent a long time working on our support systems to teach the player how to play the game without ever getting in the way of more experienced players. For that reason, only after a short delay, a button prompt is displayed to remind them of the new ability. If they're still unsure how to progress, after a longer delay, we allow the player to trigger a ghost that will show them the exact path they need to follow. We also have narrative voiceover to support this. The sandbox knew that now the wall here would be no obstacle. So that's it. All the elements come together to build that quintessential Metroidvania loop. Level design defines the intent of the space. Art ensures it's communicated and looks good, and finally the camera is positioned to make it all feel natural. For anyone still stuck, our tutorial systems gradually appear to help them out. Or at least that's the idea. Do you think it's working? Do let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.